House Democrats and Republicans have voted to delay the electric vehicle mandate. This is good news, as the U.S. House of Representatives on September 20th voted to overturn a Biden administration rule that sets for tougher emission standards for car manufacturers. Now, the joint resolution passed in a 215 to 191 vote, with eight Democrats in support and one Republican in opposition of nullifying the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA's new restrictions on emissions from cars, light trucks, pickups, and vans for models 2027 to 2032. So this delays that electric vehicle mandate, which is really good news. Although the rule does not explicitly impose an electric vehicle or EV mandate, it is expected to force manufacturers to electrify their fleets in order to comply. The resolution passed with Democratic Representatives Kular Gonzalez, Marie Glosenkamp Perez of Texas, I'm going to get all these names wrong, I apologize, Carveo of Colorado, Davis of North Carolina, Golden of Maine, and Captor of Ohio, as well as Mary Sattler Peltola of Alaska. I apologize for any names that I said incorrectly. One Republican representative, Brian Fitzgerald of Pennsylvania, voted against the measure, which doesn't make sense because Pennsylvania is one of those states where electric vehicles don't make that much sense. Ahead of the vote, the White House announced its opposition to the resolution, contending that it would prompt uncertainty in the U.S. auto market and supply chains and cede the electric vehicle and battery markets to China which isn't necessarily true, but the Biden administration policy statement said in, quote, passage of H.J. resolution, which is the House Resolution 136, would also artificially constrain consumer vehicle choice and weaken U.S. manufacturing and energy policy and harm public health. I don't believe that's true. You can put down in the comments what your thoughts are, but allowing consumers to make choices that work for them is better than the government mandating anything. The House Sustainable Energy and Environment Coalition echoed the administration's view. They want an electric vehicle mandate, even though consumers don't. And that means that most Republicans and quite a few Democrats also agreed. Now, the new standards the group said are both reasonable and widely supported across the board by everyone from vehicle manufacturers to union workers. So it means that we, the people, actually want to move this electric vehicle mandate down the road, it's not a good idea, let consumers decide. Now, the American Energy Alliance, or AEA, celebrated the bill's passage as a victory for consumers. We'll see what happens in the Senate side, of course. But Americans deserve the freedom of choice to make their own informed decisions about their transportation options. And they said, I commend the House on their passage of this resolution today and look forward to seeing it on the Senate side on the calendar soon. And AEA President Thomas Pyle said in a statement, now the measure will now head to the Senate for a vote. I'll be watching this quite diligently because I think you are allowed to make your own choices. However, Democrats controlled the upper chamber of the Senate by a razor thin margin of 51 to 49, thanks to several independent members who choose to caucus within the party on the Democrat side. Now, one of those members that might help us is Joe Manchin of West Virginia. He's been a vocal critic of the Biden administration's energy policies, particularly in electric vehicles. In a statement, he said, and quote, the federal government has no authority and no right to mandate what type of car or truck Americans can purchase for their everyday lives. This reckless and ill-informed rule will impose what is effectively an EV mandate without ensuring the security of our supply chains from nations like China without a realistic transition plan that addresses our domestic infrastructure needs. Now, we all know that the electric grid cannot support 100% of us being on electric cars. That's a huge piece of this puzzle. Plus, we've covered other issues with electric vehicles. You can check that out on our channel. Now, Senator Joe Manchin could be a key swing vote for Republicans ensuring this resolution passes. Here's the bad news. President Joe Biden, however, has stated he has promised to veto this measure, and if it makes it to his desk, he will not sign it. So it's important for us to put the push on and get this veto overridden by the people that you elected so that you can choose what you want to drive, whether it be electric, gas, hybrid, diesel, or maybe some new propulsion in the future. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be more than happy to answer. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link is in the description, plus all the links for our website, social media, my book, and our podcast. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.